You're listening to the My Simplified Life podcast, and this is episode number 162. Welcome to the My Simplified Life podcast, a place where you will learn that your past and even your present don't define your future. Regardless of what stage of life you're in, I want you to feel inspired and encouraged to pursue your dreams, simplify your life, and start taking action today. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac, and I'm excited to share my stories and life lessons with you while taking you on my own journey. This is my simplified life. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac. Now, as you know, one of my specialties or my actual specialty is being the podcast matchmaker. And what that entails is working with clients on how to tell their story, their storytelling abilities, how to be a great podcast guest. And I want to dive into that today because there are specific traits that encompass what goes into being a good podcast guest. And it's not just being good. I want you to be great. A lot of this, I also think, just stems from simply being a good person. And I say this because being a good person, a good human being, it really takes being present. It means that you are an active listener, you are engaging, and all of these really great traits of what it takes to be a good friend, let's say, is what goes into being a great podcast guest. So let's start with what goes into being a good podcast guest. And then later on, we're going to get into what makes for a great storyteller. And I'll share with you why I think these are great traits. When it comes to being a great podcast guest or what I call my perfect podcast guest, the first thing is going to be that you're punctual. You're not fashionably late. Please don't arrive five minutes late. Please don't even arrive one minute late. You should have already been armed with what you're going, what platform you're using, how you're going to record prior to jumping onto your computer. So be on time, be a minute or two early. You um, oftentimes might be in what's called a green room. And so the host will let you in when they're ready, but show up and be on time. Uh, A lot of times there are back-to-back interviews or there are other appointments that the host has, and it's just really not convenient or respectful to show up late. So be punctual, on time, early even. The next one would be to be distraction-free. Turn your phone into airplane mode. Turn the alerts on your inbox off. Shut it all down. I have had interviews where I could actually hear the guest typing on the computer a response to an email. I can hear that. The people who are listening can hear that. And it's rude. It shows that you really don't want to be there. You don't really care to be there. And it's really simple. If you just put your phone in airplane mode, put your emails to the side, turn off the inbox and be present. This goes back to what it entails to just be a good person, a good friend. You know, think about if you were on a date, let's say, would you want to be sitting across from someone who's just sitting on their phone or who says, oh, I'm going to look at this text message or just simply looks at the text message while you're in the middle of a conversation. It shows you that that person would rather be anywhere else than where they are with you right now in that conversation. So don't be that person. Don't be the he's just not into you. Don't be the he. Be the person who wants to be there, who wants to be present, who's engaging and who's excited to be talking to the host. Now, this this next tip is something that you can ask beforehand, but be camera ready. Sometimes a host will use the video on, but not actually use the video that's recorded just so they can see each other. I do this. I do ask my guests if I can take a selfie so we can start promoting uh, the episode prior to it launching. But I also like to keep it in my kind of, you know, memory type keepsake things because I have some pretty cool guests. So to, to know that I had a conversation with them, that we got to see each other, speak to each other, I love to keep those as kind of mementos for myself. But show up and be camera ready. 
if for some reason you have to have a messy hair bun, you know, let the host know that this is your camera ready for right now. Like for instance, as I'm recording this, we've had power outages, we've got thunderstorms going. Um, I, I am not showering right now because I don't want to be in the dark. But uh, I also don't have podcast interviews that are going to have a video on right now. So just show up, show up the way that you would if it's um, not necessarily a job interview, but something that you are proud of. You know how you don't have to be full makeup, real housewives type of ready glam squad, but show up in a way that says, I actually care. I got ready this morning. I brushed my hair. I, you know, put on maybe some makeup or just at least a clean shirt that shows that you do, again, want to be there. This all ties back into wanting to be present, wanting to be in the place that you are. Uh, The next tip, it goes back to being punctual, but know where your interview is at. What platform is the host using? Try it out. Do this because oftentimes you might not have the right browser. Maybe it only uses Chrome like many of them do. Is your Chrome updated? You need to have this all taken care of prior to showing up for the interview because if you don't, you're not going to be stuck in the world of the constant swirly rainbow colored icon and it's updating and now you're going to be late. So Not only are you late, but you didn't prepare properly. So look at where the interview is at. Look at the calendar invite and test it out. See if you need to do any kind of updates. See if there's anything that you need to learn about that kind of platform. And oftentimes they're not hard platforms. They're something that you just click and it's a link, but you need to make sure that your browser's updated and that you're ready to go. Next one is be hydrated. Have that glass of water next to you, but make sure it doesn't have the metal straw with the glass and is clinking away. But make sure that you have something that if you're talking for a long time, especially after COVID, I've mentioned this before, like I didn't talk for, I think, what what seemed like a long time because we didn't interact, you know, with the outside world. And then to go and have podcast interviews back to back and Zoom calls back to back, and now you're constantly talking, 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 we get dehydrated. And so it's important to have that sip of water that's ready for you, that hot cup of tea, but be hydrated. Hydrate the night before. It's not the time to go have a happy hour and enjoy your time a little too much and then show up late and not hydrate hydrated and just not be your best self. My last tip for being a great podcast guest would be that you know the topic that you're going to speak on. Sometimes the host will tell you this is the topic from your media kit that I would like to discuss. Uh, Oftentimes it's just a conversation and they'll, you know, come up with questions on the fly, but know what it is that you're going to talk about. And this can also entail you having listened to the show before, so you know what the show is about. You might have a bunch of different topics that range from your story to what your expertise is to, you know, different tools and tips that you can offer to other people. And so where on that whole range is your topic? What is it that the audience is going to want to hear from you? If you're talking about your story and it's a personal story, your journey, and it has nothing really to do with the tips that you can offer today, uh, that it's just your story, then you're going to want to make sure that that's what you stick to. So if there are prompts that you need to remind yourself of, you know, this story ties to this topic, then write them on a post-it. Stick them somewhere on your computer screen. The host isn't going to see it. Give yourself some prompts, but know what it is that you're talking about. You never want to show up and ask the host, uh, so what are we talking about today? What's going on? Because it sounds like you didn't do your homework, which obviously you didn't if that's the case. And this brings us back to storytelling. And I posted just this last week about watching the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary, watching Harry's interview with Anderson Cooper. And this is a perfect example of good and bad storytelling. I say bad storytelling because I feel like the Netflix documentary was just, it was really icky. It showcased their side, quote unquote, side of the story, but it also put everybody down while doing it. And 
they said that this is their truth. And I get that. That's their truth. But there's a way to tell your story, to tell the truth and not be hurtful and gross about it at the same time. The Netflix documentary came off as we're in this for the money. We want to be independent. We want to do good. But in order to do that, we have to make a buck. So we're going to go make $100 million on this documentary via Netflix and put our, our side of the story out. It didn't come off as really telling their story. I think that it could have been more beautifully done if they shared simply, this is how we met. This is our love story. And, you know, the royal family has a different way of doing things, but it, it got downright and really dirty versus Harry's interview with Anderson Cooper. It did share more details, but the way Harry went about it was more of his personal story, his journey, the reason why he is some of who he is. For example, he talks about when he learned that his mother died and how that reaction was and how there was no therapy, there was no communication, there was nothing to help him go along this journey as a 12-year-old who just lost his mother and is now in front of cameras, he's walking behind a coffin with the entire world looking at him. He's being handed uh, flowers. And as he said, he felt like he was the intermediary between the public and their grief for his mother by placing the flowers, you know, at the gate. And I felt like that was much more compelling and telling of who he is as a person and why versus more of the accusations and dragging of the mud, uh, everybody that was involved. And so what I'm saying is that a good storyteller tells their truth, but they also tell it with consistency. They tell it with authenticity, that word that I can't stand. But you're telling your story through your own eyes, through your lens. And the thing about that is that you can have two people who experience the exact same thing, but will each have a different story to tell because of the lens in which they saw that thing happen. So this can go back to William and Harry both experiencing the loss of their mother, but based on their age, based on their personalities, based on their conversations with their father and the queen, they have different experiences. And so their truths will be different. And I think that's important to remember when we think about storytelling and good storytelling versus bad storytelling is to tell your truth, but to also allow others to tell their truth and to remember that there might be a different quote unquote truth that is out there. And it's not to say that yours isn't the truth, but it is to say that this is your story and the way that you experienced it, the way that you saw it, the way that you felt it, and what it was for you in particular. And that's truly what the interview with Anderson Cooper did for me. It showed me what Harry has gone through, why he is who he is, what he experienced, versus the Netflix documentary was, it wasn't great storytelling. It was accusations. It felt tabloid-like. It was really kind of smear campaign. To me, that's what it felt like. And that's why there's a difference in the two. I really wish that their publicist did not allow them to do the documentary because, or the docuseries, because it just wasn't good. It didn't shed a bright light that made me think positively of them. And I know it's the same for others as well. Versus the sit down of a one-on-one of here's my truth and this is what happened to me. And I haven't read the book yet, but I'm hopeful that the book will represent that as well. And it'll go to the good storytelling. It'll go to telling Harry's story the way that he wants to tell it, the way that he experienced it. This also ties into ensuring that whenever you tell your story, you're consistent You need to tell the same story because if you veer left, right, any other which way or pivot in your story, then it shows that you aren't truthful. 
It does not build trust and authority the way that it does when you stand by your word, when you are consistent in everything that you say. And in order to be a good storyteller, you have to be consistent. This is what builds brand and authority and trust. And it shows that you stand for the same thing. You are not going to waver one way or the other in your story. So be consistent. Stick to your word. This is what's going to get you further along in your storytelling abilities, but also in building that visibility and that trust and authority in others when they hear your story. It's telling the truth. Don't offer a variety of versions of your story. That's what's going to get you on the Netflix docuseries and talked about negatively. If you don't tell the truth and the truth comes out, and I'll go back to there's your truth, there's my truth, you know, and there's somewhere in between. But if you're able to back up, this is my truth because, uh, you know, this is how I experienced it then that's your truth. And that is what I'm talking about. Don't offer different versions though. Don't say that one day, and we did see this, especially with Harry and him dressing up uh, as a Nazi in the costume one year where he took responsibility for it. And then he pivoted a bit. Now he's blaming William and Kate. And you can't keep changing your story. You need to stick to it. And if your story changes for some reason, you need to tell people why. Why didn't you come forward and tell your story and its entire truth to begin with? This is what goes back to building trust. If you're out there in the media, giving interviews, podcast interviews, writing a book, doing whatever you're doing, you want to build the trust in the people that are going to be reading it and listening to you. Because if they don't trust you, they're not going to buy your book. They're not going to want to hear your story. They won't want to buy whatever you're selling. They won't want to watch your docuseries. And this is why telling the truth is so important. Be consistent. Share your truth in whatever way that is, but be consistent in it and own whatever kind of pivots that might have been made along the way. Own it because that's being truthful. That's being who you are and sharing with the world that you are human. I truly believe that we can all be good storytellers. It doesn't take a masterclass. It doesn't take courses. It takes being who you are. It takes being consistent, being truthful, and knowing what your story is. That's what makes a good storyteller. To be a great podcast guest, you have to show up. Show up, be kind, be respectful, be on time, know why you're there and be engaging. And all of this is going to turn you into the perfect storyteller, the perfect podcast guest. And I really feel that each and every one of us has this inside of us, that we're all capable of sharing our stories in a genuine way that evokes emotion from others, that encourages change and inspiration and motivation, that we're not alone in in this experience at all. So practice your story, share your story with others, don't waver, and show up. That's what I ask of you. Show up, be yourself, and the world is going to welcome you so much because we want to hear your story. Until next week, my friends.